my work is quite um, serious and there are themes that sort of go through a lot of everything I do. There are a number of things really. Um, I like kind of the idea of the absurd and the idea of the serious but also silly and the humor is also very, you know, it's a very important part of what I do. And so some of the things I do are just um, very serious but at the same time completely stupid as well. I think it's that thing of the tragedy and comedy. Actually, I think, yeah, that, that might sum up my work quite well. You know, because, you know, I mean, the world we live in is quite tragic in many ways, you know. But then you, ha you have to see the funny side of a lot of things, you know, from you know, bigotry to, to um, you know, to death, to um, glamour, excess, you know, I mean, all these things I'm very interested in. I think as an artist, it's important not to be stagnant in the work. I mean, it's very good to be creative and just to keep it exciting. You know, I like to explore different ways of working. And I think that's why I think I keep changing uh, the things I do, you know, from a bit of video to collage and public sculpture because I, I just enjoy keeping it exciting for myself really and hopefully the audience will enjoy it too. Well Yinka is one of the most important contemporary artists working in Britain today. He was born in 1962 in London but as a young child went to Nigeria which is where his parents are from and lived in Lagos until he was a teenager then came back to the UK to go to art college. During that time contracted a really serious illness which has left him increasingly disabled throughout his life and that's a quite an important part when looking at the work here and in thinking about how an artist like Yinka um, practices, how he works with other people to make his work possible. I'm from a Nigerian family and in Nigeria a lot of parents actually want their children to be doctors, lawyers, accountants and I didn't really want to be an artist, I mean I was meant to study law. To kind of go back to the beginning, I suppose it was when he was at college and a teacher said to him, you're not making African work. And at that time in the UK, in the 80s, there were a lot of very important uh, black and Asian artists who were making very political work. And of course, I was thinking about his heritage, I was thinking about the way he had been brought up, I was thinking about his political interests. And found in Brixton Market this uh, fabric, which is called Dutch wax fabric. And it's a fabric that was made originally in the 18th century for the Indonesian market by Dutch manufacturers. The Indonesians didn't like it. It's a batik, it's a wax resist fabric. And they found another market in West Africa. And so over time, the fabric that Yinka always uses in his work, it has become known as an African fabric. And you often see Nigerian women wearing these very flamboyant dresses and headdresses made in this kind of fabric. But for Yinka, it was an absolutely kind of perfect vehicle for expressing an interest in a post-colonial world, a world in which trade and politics come together in such a vital and important way. Well, I think it's a great opportunity to see work that's been done over a period of 10 years in the same place. You know, that rarely ever happens because as soon as work is made, you know, it goes to exhibitions in different parts of the world. It goes into various collections. So you hardly actually ever see a lot of your work in the same place at the same time. So from that point of view, it's been great to see that. And it's also like um, a diary, really. You can tell what you were thinking about at, at a particular point in your history, you know. And so uh, for an artist, it's like opening a big diary actually so which is actually quite I mean there's a sort of you know a slightly emotional side to it as well because you kind of recall various moments in your life as you go through the exhibition. Mm -hmm.